You want to watch my life after genius video so bad. Ooh. I am now going to assault your mind with subliminal messages. <laughs> Sorry, you had to see that. for now. However, there is some loud yard work happening sort of nearby that you can probably kind of hear. And it's also about to thunderstorm, which is supposed to continue for the rest of this week. So what I'm trying to say is we're gonna try to get this filming done in the great outdoors while we can, but if it gets any louder then I'm just gonna film the rest of it inside. Today I have yet another historical fiction recommendation. I never used to really be super duper into historical fiction, but this author is honestly probably responsible for getting me more into it. I never really read historical fiction before, but as you can tell from my Goodreads and my channel, it's becoming like a more read genre for me now. And this author's books I think have been great in getting me into it just because they're working beyond just the genre of historical fiction. They are extremely funny and extremely romantic. So that author that I'm going to be chatting about today is Kate Quinn. I never hear her talked about ever. I feel like maybe she's an author that is more read by like older women. She herself is, I feel like, not a super duper like trendy author. I don't really see like 20 something, uh, early 30 something booktubers talking about her ever. Actually both of these copies of her books that I have have done some time in Goodwill. They both have Goodwill stickers on them so I think she must be appealing more to like more like working class women, something like that. And her books are definitely targeted towards women because they always deal with feminist issues. They always have kind of a feminist slant to them in terms of their morality, but they also contain lots and lots of different types of women. And also they're just they're so much fun. So yeah, I never really see Kate Quinn talked about, but I want to recommend her stuff just because I've now read two things by her and I do plan to continue reading more by her. Because I've liked her stuff so much, I've also started branching out a little bit. If you've seen my video on Gary Jennings's Aztec, that's another amazing historical fiction I've read recently. I also read Nefertiti by Michelle Moran and that was also amazing and I plan to read some more by her as well. And then I have a bunch of other historical fiction that is now on my list. There is one in particular called Memoirs of Hadrian that I am chomping at the bit to get at, but I have to finish my current physical TBR before I allow myself to buy any books because this is how I keep myself from going bankrupt, basically. Today we're going to be talking about Miss Kate Quinn and the books that I've read by her so far. I think her most popular book might be The Alice Network, which I actually don't know a ton about. Kate Quinn primarily writes about two time periods. Uh, the first is ancient Rome and the second is like World War II-ish stuff. The one that I've read by her that is kind of around World War II doesn't really deal with like super holocaust -y stuff. It's more concerned with Soviet perspectives and then post-war perspectives. So it's primary focus and that book is, by the way, The Huntress. This is from 2019 so it's pretty recent. This book is about like the aftermath of the war and like hunting down Nazi war criminals basically. So it's basically a Nazi hunting book and it is absolutely fantastic. The other book that I've read by her and this is the first book that I read by her which I completely on impulse picked up at Goodwill. Like this is the start of it all. This is Mistress of Rome. I actually almost didn't read this 
and I almost DNF'd it at a certain point, but it was just going so quickly that I just kept going, and by the end I was completely sold. I was having so much fun that I was utterly sold. This deals with a slave woman who basically works her way up to being the emperor's mistress and getting real political power in ancient Rome. I think this is actually the second in a series. It works fine as a standalone. That's one thing that's really great about Kate Quinn's books is that you can read them as like parts of a series in order or you can just read them all as standalones and they will still work. I feel like they are super refreshing to me because they very clearly aren't catering to book talk or to booktube or any kind of like online community or politics, which is probably why I find them so progressive. I I think I remember most about Mistress of Rome is that it was extremely funny. The Huntress was very, very romantic. One of the main characters in this is a bisexual woman. I felt like she She's just like one of my favorite female characters I've read in a really long time. She is our Soviet and she is absolutely vicious. And what I really, really liked about this is that when she falls in love and gets, you know, involved in romance, she remains vicious and like her character acts in a way that is like consistent. It's not like, oh, the woman falls in love and she gets all like soft, soft and feminine and like starts adhering to traditional virtues. She is always just kind of a really vicious character and it's refreshing. I felt like the Huntress did a really good job of like handling the aftermath of World War II too and like handling like moral ambiguity and how uncomfortable it is to draw lines while also like not being an apologist for literally anyone involved in something Nazi related. There's a lot of heart in this, in this book. And I feel like Kate Quinn tends towards very happy endings too, for the characters who like deserve it at least. Yeah, and then Mistress of Rome is just an absolute romp. If you thought that ancient Rome can't be fun, it actually is extremely fun. Like this book actually made me laugh a couple of times, which I really wasn't expecting. This has like, a little bit of cringe in it. It's so earnest that it's hard to feel like bad about it. It's hard to really condemn the book for it. Kate Quinn stuff is just like so authentic to me. It really comes across like she has not only done her research but also done her due diligence in making her characters seem like actual people who lived in a certain time, not stereotypes. Like in The Huntress there is a woman who is a photographer. She has a really good relationship with her father and they like to go fishing together and her father also like isn't allowing her to go to college so we're like because that's just like what was normal at the time and so there's just a lot of those like complications that are included in these books that really grounded in the time period without like like taking away from the character's humanity. Like you can have an overall feminist narrative that also like acknowledges the bigotry that was present at a certain time and that was normalized at a certain time. They're just really, really good stories. There are always a ton of really interesting characters, multiple perspectives in both of these books that I've read. It feels like every character is done justice, including the minor characters. I think that Nina, our really mean Soviet pilot, was absolutely my favorite out of these two books, but I also really, really liked the protagonist in Mistress of Rome, Thea. She is a very, very endearing character, um, very, very likable and sweet, while also not being like completely bullshittable, like she is clever. None of Quinn's characters are like dumb or gullible for plot's sake. They're overall just really, really, really well constructed stories. For that reason, I would highly, highly recommend you check her out. I don't think I've ever seen anyone that I know on Goodreads reading her stuff. You know, probably because they kind of seem like boomer books, I guess. 
which I think is what I called this when I talked about it in my first video that I mentioned it in. Honestly, if that's what they are, then they're still pretty fucking good. You should check out Kate Quinn. She does really, really good historical fiction, which is funny and romantic and just amazingly, amazingly both plot and character driven. Yeah, it got me into historical fiction. Maybe if you're looking for a gateway drug into that genre, then it can be that for you too. That is all I had for you today. I do want to say before I go, thank you all so much for your support after the last video that I put up. I literally, I swear to God, almost like didn't upload that because I was expecting to get nothing but hostility in response. In the past, when I've uploaded feminist content to my channel, I've gotten kind of swarmed by not just any extremists, but specifically Islamic extremists. And I, probably because I was talking about Rahaf Muhammad, you haven't seen any of that because as you know, I like scan and filter through all of my comments. But yeah, I wasn't really expecting to get any kind of like major support or encouragement for that, but I am so glad to see that that resonated with people. And I hope that this kind of gets that message out there a little bit more. If you don't know what video I'm talking about, it's my it's okay to not be a sexy reader video. Um, and I just talk a little bit about how booktube and book talk are kind of pornifying the like image of like the reader girl and like suggesting to content creators, specifically female content creators, that they have to like look like sexy and like like a cool sexy girl to talk about books on here. And you don't have to perform like male gaze sex appeal for um you know, to talk about books. So that's basically what that video talks about. I talk about a couple of specific instances that have really kind of shaken me recently um, and which made me want to make that video. If you want to check that out, there's just a lot of like support and solidarity and women talking about their experiences with beauty culture in the comments. But yeah, thank you all so much for all that encouragement. That was really, really nice. When I logged in the day after uploading that, I was really bracing myself to get an onslaught of hate comments that I then had to delete and report. But they were literally all supportive. Like there was not one hate comment. So that says a lot. I mean, I did look at my analytics recently and in the past 90 days, it says 100% of my viewers have been women. I'm sure that that is slightly incorrect, but I do know that the analytics have been trending to towards 75% women minimum. That's fantastic. So I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm glad that you are all here and that that, that that resonated with you in a positive way. Yeah, and since there was interest there, I did end up making a playlist of like feminist interest videos that may be of interest to you. So you can find that on my playlist page. That is all I have for you. It looks like I've officially beat the rain. Um, I thought it started earlier, but it didn't. I'm gonna take off now because it is really hot out here. Um, yeah. Thank you and bye.